We are inundated with riba all around us. Can you change that system? If you can, go ahead. I'm not stopping you. I know I can't change it. But then what must I do? If I am to preserve my faith, this is what he said. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He said, the time will come when the best property of a Muslim would be sheep, which he will take to the mountain sides and the places where rain falls so as to flee with his religion <coughs> from fitna. Hmm? It's not only shirk, it's not only riba, it is more than that. But I have time for only one more. The last people to come out of Dajjal will be women. And a man would have to return to his home and tie down, coercively restrain his wife, his sister, his daughter to protect them from being seduced by Dajjal. What kind of a brainwashing is this going to be of the world of women? What is it? Do we have any idea that they should be following Dajjal? He said that women will be dressed and yet be naked. Has that already happened? Well then what are you waiting on? If today it's bad, if today they are in shorts in the shopping malls, and as you walk around in the shopping malls, all that you're seeing is flesh and flesh and flesh and flesh and flesh, Tomorrow, they're going to be walking around in the shopping malls in their intimate underwear. Yes. And then the day after that, they're going to be walking around the shopping malls naked. Is that the world that you want to bring your children up in? Is this what you want your children to see? Huh? Don't you have love for your children? Did you live in a world like that, that your children should be subjected to that? Huh? No? He said that people will have sexual intercourse in public like donkeys. No Prime Minister ever said that. No. <laughs> but Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said that. And the evidence is now abundant that we are on the verge. We are on the verge of seeing this with our own eyes. He said that in Akhiru Zaman, one man would have to maintain 50 women. You heard that, haven't you? Come on, shake your heads. Yes. You have heard that, haven't you? Yes. Good. What's going to cause it? Why this amazing disproportion? Is it war? Is it war? <laughs> or is it plague? Our answer that we have been giving for a long time now but the medical profession doesn't seem to be listening is that there is going to be a calamitous decline in the birth of baby boys that there is an attack which has been launched on the male sperm And as this male sperm is attacked, the chromosomes become weaker and weaker. One of the instruments of the attack is something you may have seen somewhere, sometime. I don't know whether you know about it. Here, we have it here. It's something called a cell phone. Ever saw it? 
Huh? It emits radiation. It doesn't work by magic. And the radiation which comes from the cell phone, the radiation which comes from the laptop computer, the radiation which is all around you with, what is it called, Wi-Fi? Ah, Wi-Fi. That radiation is not harmless. That radiation has an impact upon you. But the damage on the male is greater than the damage on the female. I went to give this lecture at uh, Telecom, is it? A Malaysian Telecom Company. And after I gave the lecture, one of the employees of the company got up and said, Sheikh, we got the evidence. Our personnel who work on putting up the poles, they have reported, they can't have baby boys. We have the evidence right here in Malaysia. Because the chromosomes become weaker and weaker so that the male chromosome cannot fertilize the egg. And when the male chromosome fails to fertilize the egg, then the default is the female. And that is the Jal success. And so we are on the verge now of a tomorrow when there's going to be an explosion of the birth of baby girls and a baby boy will be one in a thousand perhaps. What kind of world is it going to be then? The Dajjal came along with a master plan and the master plan was made was designed to make Nabi Muhammad alayhi salam look bad, bad, bad. The master man is that civilized men have only one wife. And he brainwashed mankind to such an extent. He brainwashed both men and women to such an extent that nearly everybody has accepted the child's view that civilized men have only one wife. And if a man were to step out of monogamy to have more than one wife, society looks down upon him. In consequence of which, Dajjal could not point, look at him, there he is, your prophet, look how many wives he had, makes him look bad. What are you going to do in your society tomorrow, which is coming? Tell me what's your plan. When women can't get husbands, they're going to be stealing husbands. Oh yeah. When women cannot get husbands, it's going to be free for all. It's going to be zina around the world. The Prophet ﷺ spoke about Akhiru Zaman as an age of Kathra to Zina and children being born as bastard children. Our solution is the Muslim village. One of the first lessons I was taught by my teacher, Mawlana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah, when I left Al-Azhar University to go to study with him in Pakistan, one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life, although I love Egypt. The first lesson he taught me, and it was a shock, because I had attended the best college in my country. I had got a Western education. It came as a shock to me. He said to me, once you accept this Quran to be the word of Allah, then whatever is in the Quran, whether you understand it or you don't, 
whether you are comfortable with it or you are not you must submit that is Islam <laughs> that is Islam let me repeat that because a young, a young lady wrote to me from Egypt and she was rather annoyed <laughs> how come how come Sheikh they can have more wives we can't have more husbands <laughs> She was, she was demanding an explanation from me. So this, this is how we begin the subject. Once you accept that this Quran is Kalamullah, the word of Allah, then whatever is in the Quran, you must bow down and submit to it. Whether you understand or you don't, submit. Understanding will come later. Ask me, I can tell you. How much I knew at that age 21. <laughs> and how much I know now. Whether you are comfortable with it or you are not. Bow down and submit to the Quran. And so our first response is that Allah in His wisdom. And He is more wise than all of us. In his wisdom, he has recognized the right of a man to have more than one wife. For whatever reason, that's his personal business. You don't ask him. That's not your business. But Allah has placed a limit. He said two, three, four. Which means not two plus three plus four. No. <laughs> Two or three or four. But on the condition that you must be equitable in your relationship with your wives. You must show equity. And if you fear that you cannot be equitable with them, then, says Allah, stay with only one. Okay, so Islam, the religion, has given a different, a different uh, philosophy of marriage to that which, come, which has come from Dajjal. Make your choice. Will you take that which has come from Allah or will you take that which has come from Dajjal?